Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to FX32 once. So in the last tutorial we make the wind uh, wind simulation. So uh, in this tutorial we can add secondary effects like the uh, rain and uh, leaves. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So the rain actually is uh, pretty simple. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, I get the wind here. So this is the cache we we, we saved last time. So I just uh, merge that here. So basically, it's just uh, the same wind simulation, uh, but I don't want the density. So I just uh, delete the density. So now you you see nothing but there are something. So we have the velocity here. So before it's density and velocity, now it's uh, only velocity. So we just want to use this velocity field to uh, driven our particle simulation. So uh, and this is uh, uh, if you check the last tutorial, you know this is the this is the mesh we have. Uh, here so last time we have create uh, a scatter here uh, I also make a branch here so this is the grid I remesh it so it's it has more polygon to work with and uh, it's and uh, I just copied the attribute off here which is the same here so so the noise should be the same and uh, and the particle will emit from this white area as well. So uh, that's what's this. And uh, we create a pop network. And the velocity uh, here is plugged into the second input and uh, the mesh is uh, in the first input here. And uh, uh, we add some uh, collider here. And the uh, uh, we can delete this. Uh, yeah, it's uh, this is not used. So we can uh, have this pop add back by uh, by volume. So this it's using the secondary uh, second context ge geometry, which is the velocity field from the wind. So after they force, so it's pretty simple. Nothing else just play around with the burst rate and uh, yeah that's it and uh, you meet from the CD attribute uh, yeah you can see if we check around the okay it's pretty laggy so let me watch the cache uh, This is the cache. Uh, let's see this. So this is the ring effect, basically a particle, uh, which is pretty simple. And I need to I did some clean up here. So also here we cache to the one one sixty eight. So I can uh, time shift so. Uh, basically the first frame is already 48 frames here so if we see the cache here the first frame is the first frame now so because it needs some free roll here and uh, so by the frame at 48 it should be cover my camera so yeah and I did some post processing so first uh, you can see because we have the gravity some of the particles uh, uh, are, are underground so we don't want that so based on their y position so I just uh, if the y is negative uh, less than negative 0.1 I just you know blast them so you see nothing here so uh, this is this is before this is after so so all, all these are, are on stay on the ground. 
and I delete the color. I time shift, and if you notice, uh, you can see if you pay attention to this in this area, you can see some particles stopped. Uh, let me play it for you. Yeah, you can see this area. Uh, you can see some particle doesn't move, right? So if we see it from the side view, it's this part, this part we see in the camera. So see, they stopped. Why they stopped? It's because remember we do the wind simulation. We have this uh, reference box where we calculate our smoke only in this region. And so when we import our velocity field here, our velocity field only contain in this region. So there are no velocity outside of this region. So the particle basically, if they fly out to this area, they, they're they not gonna simulate. And I mean, it's simulating, but there, there are no forces to make them move. So that's why they stopped. And you can see this part as well. They already hit the bounding box. There's no velocity uh, from the wind. And so the particle are not moving. So this is not good. So how do we fix it? So because they stopped, so we can basically find this particle based on the uh, velocity, right? Because the moving particle, they are high, uh, high velocity here. And this one just get no velocity or the velocity are pretty low. So based on the velocity, I can clean up, you can see. And after, after my clean up, uh, basically most of the unmoved uh, particles are deleted. So, so the killing here, uh, so velocity, if we check our geometry attribute and find the V attribute, you can see V as a vector, so it got X, Y, and Z. So it's hard to compare the vector to a certain value and delete something. So if we convert that to the speed, speed is a float value. So uh, which I can say if the speed is less than one, I find this point. So uh, how do we convert that to uh, to a vector to a, to a float? So if I use a Rango node here, and basically if I set as speed, equals length at v and let's uh, find speed as well you can see speed is uh, you can see 51.3857 uh, this is this velocity and you can see we got different speed based on the uh, velocity and it's a float value and we got you know, we got some uh, zero value, 0 0.5 value, which I mean, these are the particles that are stopped. So, oh, so we got our, uh, so that's how you convert your velocity to a float. So this is a float. So here, uh, so if we got Calculate the velocity is less than my threshold, which is here. Then just remove remove the current point. Okay. So now it's like this. So if we make a lesser and lesser, more the the more like uh, point will reveal. And now it's basically the same. So if we increase, we are deleting point. So if we make uh, four or five so there are high only high speed uh, particles are there so now if we go to the camera view basically uh, all the particles are uh, you know are uh, moving high speed and uh, these low uh, speed particles are deleted okay so yeah that's how you uh, that's how you make your uh, clean your particles. And one thing I haven't done in my uh, uh, thing is 
which I think uh, it's pretty important is uh, if these particle collide with the ground, uh, they should have some splash, uh, which I haven't do this because it's not when well, it, it's render it's not obvious uh, it's not you can see you can't see it because the wind is too dense so but you can include that in in, the, in your setup and it's a uh, pretty easy to do uh, I can show some demo here so if we have a pop network uh, we have a sphere we have uh, Sapphire, let's see. Uh, let's move it up a little bit. And we create a, let's say this is your 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 ground plane here, okay? And uh, we plug this uh, Sapphire here. And we want, let's pretend this is the rain particles, okay? So we we set the velocity to zero, negative one, zero. Basically, the particles are going downwards. So it will hit the ground. So let's add a ground plane. Uh, so now if we play it, Right, yeah, and uh, let's no bounce uh, friction tool and not display the geometry and uh, velocity. Uh, it's a little bit different and uh, give some velocity. Yeah, let's say this is our particle. So, so if I want to make a splash when they hit the ground. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, we can use pop collision detect. So now we point to our soft geometry, okay? And the uh, behavior you can preserve, you can call it hit. You can see if now we hit, you can see these particles, okay? So we can use a uh, pop replicate, uh, you know, to generate particles in this uh, red areas to make a, you know, splash or something like that. Uh, so yeah, you can make that. But I haven't made into the scene, so uh, that's what you can do in future. So let's talk about the leaves.